Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time where we talk health this morning and we're looking at the outbreak of the Marburg virus. Now, amidst uh, coronavirus and monkeypox, the WHO has confirmed the presence of the highly infectious Marburg virus in Ghana. Now, and according to the World Health Organization, two unrelated people died after testing positive to Marburg in the southern Ashanti. The highly infectious disease is similar to Ebola and has no vaccine. Meanwhile, in Nigeria, the Center for Disease Control, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control and CDC, has declared the disease and epidemic emergence in the country following that outbreak and its dictation in West Africa. It also mentioned that both importation of the disease and its potential impact on Nigerian's population would be moderate. We have uh, a medical practitioner joining the conversation this morning to make sense of all that's going on. Dr. Chisom Mweke, it's good to have you join us. Dr. Chisom. All right. Dr. Chisholm, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right. So quickly, what do we need to know about this virus, uh, the Marburg virus? Yes, Marburg virus is what we call a hemorrhagic fever, just like Ebola. So, started from primate, to human, to human to human contact. Blood, whether this is the sun, the sanitizer, um, yeah, and so on and so forth. So it was first discovered in Germany and then in 1967, and since then, a couple of outbreaks throughout the world, which mostly come up to Africa and a few parts of South Africa. All right, so we probably seem to be having, uh, you know, some connection issue. Could barely hear you. I mean, I'm straining to hear you right here in the studio. But um, let's move on now. Uh, you're saying that there's some similarity with Ebola. Can you quickly tell us uh, what the symptoms, uh, you know, we should be looking out for? What symptoms are associated with the Mab of virus? Okay, like you said, it's a hemorrhagic fever. So the symptoms are similar to Ebola in the sense that the patients will have malaise, which is some generalized body weakness, some pain, headache, chill in the beginning phases, which may later progress to you know, other serious symptoms, such as clotting abnormality, organ failure, shock. And eventually, they eat more well managed. We also have, you know, uh, a lot of thoughts, school of thought, and medical practitioners saying that uh, the with COVID nineteen and the monkey pox, it's possible that this could have been a trigger to uh, this virus that has been uh, dictated or discovered, not necessarily discovered, but dictated in Ghana. Uh, do you think that that's the case and are we likely to see more viruses? Well, it seems like there's an outbreak of different kinds of viruses. And I, for one, will not say that one is more important than the other. We all need to be on higher alert in order to be able to watch out for these symptoms and continue them before we have a full um, outbreak in Nigeria. All right, then. So uh, we also look at, you know, how can we manage all of this uh, despite the fact that we haven't really overcome or we still have to deal with COVID-19 and there's monkeypox, there's also Lassa fever, you have other issues. Uh, the, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control is very positive. They're, they're saying that, you know, the impact would be on a very moderate level. Do you think that that's the case? Uh, do you think that we are on top of our game in terms of all the viruses that we're faced with at the time 
coupled with the Marburg virus? To be quite frank with you, more has to be done. I mean, if you set the track right and we are able to, it has to be more. I mean, not just to see like Lagos and Africa, people are aware of this virus, especially health care providers. But in other places, the populace is not so aware. Even when it comes to COVID 19, a lot of people have dropped their guard. And I feel like there's that feeling of generalized lethargy in the air, in which people are tired and just want to pursue their lives. So I feel like as healthcare workers and other people's responsibility to keep educating the market, to keep pushing out this information, to keep explaining signs and symptoms and you know, trigger alerts so that people will be aware and people will be educated and people will be better prepared. Mm. So, but let's get to a point where we talk about uh, the prevention now. What can stakeholders do? The government is also on this table. You have the people. Uh, so, w what are the preventives now? Um, hi, could you speak the question again? So I'm, I'm saying that let's get to a point where we talk about how we can, you know, prevent this, the spread of the virus. There's been assurance from the uh, Center for Disease Control. That's the Nigerian Center for Disease Control. It talks about the fact that the impact will be moderate. And so what can stakeholders do? When we talk stakeholders, the government is not left out on the one hand, and you also have the people. Mm -hmm. What exactly can we do to prevent the spread of this virus? First of all, I'll say education, peer to peer education. We should keep putting the word out there, explaining to people, advising them, informing them that information is power. Secondly, I would say proper hygiene. Just like with COVID, with Ebola, and so on, proper hand washing, proper sanitation. Because um, some of the modes of transfer, other than human, is like climate. We have to keep our environment, keep our food, you know, sanitary. Yeah. The, well, um, that's that's for the people now. How about the government? They're saying that uh, there seem to be a lot of, you know, inspections or restrictions at the border level. Do you think that that will make any impact? Restrictions are the way to At the border level. Yes, that's very important because some of our African neighbors, from what we've seen, the outbreaks have come from our African neighbors. From what I said earlier, and most likely in an Eastern Africa, as you know, we don't have to far border control. Things could be beefed up from the look of things. So I would say, yes, proper border control matters a lot. Getting people's temperature and their general clinical sequence in order to continue the spread of the country. So uh, with all of this that we're uh, grappling with, do you think that we probably might be faced with another lockdown that's uh, coronavirus? Uh, we still mm -hmm. have monkeypox, and there's also Lassa fever, and now we're talking about the Marburg virus. Yeah, Are we likely looking at a lockdown? Well, it's too early to say for now. What I'll say is that if we are very high on the preventive measures, we would not need to go to another lockdown, hopefully. So it depends on you and it depends on me. Well, that's so much we can take this morning. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Chisom Weke, uh, for being part of the show. We appreciate your time. You're welcome. Virus, its outbreak and detention in, uh, you know, Ghana, and the fact that the Nigerian government has assured Nigerians of uh, the moderate impacts in terms of importation and the spread of it. Well, it's important that we do not neglect, you know, the non-pharmaceutical protocols that we have already. Hygiene is on top of the list. It's important. Be paranoid with washing your hands every other time. Wear your nose masks as often 
as you can and uh, protect yourself. And that's the only way we can stay safe. When we come back, we'll be looking at more interesting conversation right here. Please stay with us.